Hello everybody, today the uh, welcome to the feast of uh, Saint Richard of Chichester. Uh, he is the saint of the day and I have also chosen him as the saint of the week. It wasn't, e it wasn't difficult because he's the only saint this week who is commemorated at Mass because the Feast of the Sacred Heart on Friday and the Immaculate Heart of Mary on Saturday uh, they pushed out uh, any other any other feast so it wasn't difficult to choose Saint Richard uh, as the Saint of the Week even though I've heard of him but that's about all you know I don't know very much about him uh, after all Chichester is a long way it's on the south coast I have stayed in the vicinity uh, on, on one occasion the only thing that I remember very vividly about it was the cathedral because in 1861 the uh, in, a, in a windy night the steeple actually collapsed, it telescoped into its, uh, on itself uh, and, and ended up as a huge pile uh, in the middle of the uh, middle of the cathedral uh, at the crossover. Uh, and uh, the extraordinary thing is that, that it was absolutely symmetrical, a beautiful cone. And we know that because uh, a very old photograph uh, show, shows that, uh, that that's how, it, that's how it ended up. So that's what I remember most about Chichester. Uh, what about the, I had no idea that the cathedral, say for instance, was the, the centre of uh, a, a very popular pilgrimage and that began uh, at his death in 1283 and went on until the shrine was uh, uh, dismantled by Henry VIII's commissioners in the Reformation and so that ended up too as a pile uh, but it was carted away, of course, except, of course, that they were very careful. They were instructed to take out any valuables, and the valuables had to be deposited in the Tower of London. I have no, I, I no doubt that they weren't kept there for, the, for safety for the people of Chichester. I think they'd be sold on uh, uh, to um, help Henry and his finances. Anyway, what about Richard himself? Well, Richard was primarily, I suppose, a, a scholar. He was an academic. He, he, he went to Oxford uh, and was there quite a few years before. He moved on to Paris uh, and then on to Bologna in Italy. So, you know, he moved around the continent there uh, as a scholar, only to, become, to come back to Oxford as their chancellor. And so there, he was their leader uh, and he honed his, his abilities in organisation. So he became an experienced organiser. And on that account, when one of his friends, or I think he'd been a former tutor, uh, became Archbishop of Canterbury, he appointed him as Chancellor to the Diocese of, of, of Canterbury. In other words, he, he was to be the organiser, really, the organiser of, of the diocese. By that time he was 45, but he wasn't a priest. So he decided that it would be a good idea to be a priest. So he studied uh, for a year or two and was then ordained. Uh, so I think that was at the age of 45. Well, he was so successful there that the same Archbishop of Canterbury uh, made sure that he was elected uh, as Bishop of Chichester. But that didn't go quite so smoothly as he hoped because what happened was that the, the king, another Henry actually, Henry III, he had his own candidate that he wanted to be Bishop of Chichester. And so on that account, on that account uh, because he wanted that, he wouldn't, let, he wouldn't let Richard take possession of his cathedral or go into his house, he froze his income. And so Richard had to work uh, from uh, a friend's house uh, with next to no money and so on, but he, he the case that of course then went to Rome. Uh, Rome adjudicated in Richard's favour against the king, but <laughs> the king wasn't going to count out to that. The king said, nope, I want my until, until the Pope threatened him with excommunication. Uh, and then Richard moved in. And he was bishop there uh, for nine years. It obviously created a, a, an enormous impression. He, he was 
he was a, a people's person, and so, in particular, the poor. So he, he, he certainly, not only academic, but he was also able to come down uh, to people. He, as far as the clergy were concerned, well, he wanted very high standards from them, but he, he, he did it by example. He had very high standards for himself, and he saw he had a very well organized diocese. <clears throat> And uh, the fact that he was saintly, well, that, that of course, <coughs> came out uh, very much to the fore after he died, because they immediately, the whole, the whole area, regarded him uh, as a saint, and he was canonized nine years later. So what do I think of him? What do I think, uh, sort of sum him up? I, I, I think of, his, of him as an all-rounder, academic, learned man, at the same time, able to get down to the people's level, so he was a people's man. He was obviously a very, very good organiser. He, he'd, he'd, he'd obviously uh, got, got, got the clergy on his side and, and so on. And of course, the evidence of, of the fact that they, they uh, honoured him so much immediately after his death, eminently, saint, eminently saintly. And so, a good patron uh, for that diocese. Well, now he's got very little links to here, but I thought in a prayer uh, we might ask his intercession for, for this diocese, the Diocese of Hexham at Newcastle. Now, we can't expect to ask the Lord, we can't expect him to provide us with someone with all those variable things that, that, uh, that uh, Richard had. I mean, Richard there, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a good organiser, learned, uh, exemplary, uh, and a good inspirational leader. We can't expect all that out of one man, really. But we can pray that among the clergy and the laity, among, among all the people of the diocese, that we will have people who are learned, learned particularly in the scriptures and theology, that we'll have people who are good organisers, um, can, 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 can look after the, the organization of the diocese, that, that we will have people who are uh, leaders, inspirational leaders, uh, and above all, of course, that they're all in their different ways uh, should be holy. And so that would be my prayer. But through the intercession of St. Richard and our own patron, St. Cuthbert, through their intercession, we ask you, Lord, to bring those qualities among the clergy and the people of this diocese. And we make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.